hundreds of bases at 44. Spiritus, I'll come over here, and the, we'll be starting with the bass part. So, sopranos and altos, go ahead and sing whichever A works in your octave. So, Connie's going to just give us a pitch. We'll start with that repeated A, then we'll add the alto part, which is the A up to the B, then we'll add the soprano part, which is the C sharp up to a D, I think, or something like that. And then the tenor part will enter last, and the instrumentalists will be adding parts after that. So we'll go about, I think we said 10 times. This is this one? I'm getting something, yes. Yeah, so so all, want it all together, not harmonized. Not until fifth time. So, uh, is that right? No, fourth time. So you guys will be coming in on the, on the second time. The altos? Yes. So the bass will come in, the altos will sing that alto part. Sopranos will sing at the soprano part. So you're in the fourth part. So for the fourth time with the tenor, we'll have all four parts. Then the instrumentalists will start to the start coming in. Uh, all of the chants will begin in unison. Connie's going to play the melody one time to remind people how it goes. In the next few weeks, we shouldn't have to have the entire melody played. But first time through on all of these where you sing, when you sing, the first time you sing, sing the melody. The only weird one is the Benisante Spirit. Okay? So, but I'll, I'll probably pop over here to assist you. That'd be good. Yeah, um, yeah, wait for the Lord. We're only going to wait for the Lord three times. It'll be played through one time, sung in unison one time, and four parts. Same thing with the Lord here up there. Um, anyway, it'll be fun. Am I going to understand that when we actually do it? Yes, because yeah. I'll point to you. Okay. But the first time of all the chants, sing just the melody and give the jump rope a chance to kind of hit the ground and get everybody in. All right.
Lutheran Church, we are so very glad that you are here with us this morning as we join together to worship in the name of Jesus. If this is one of the first times you are worshiping with us, we invite you to grab an usher, myself, or just pretty much anyone, introduce yourself and let us get to know you a little bit better. We have a couple of processes uh, that we like to do here. We've got uh, welcome folders on the end of each pew. We invite you to grab that welcome folder, sign it with your name and your information and pass it on down the pew. And then secondly, starting again this Sunday, there should be some slips for prayer requests in those folders. If you have a request for a prayer that you would like read aloud at the end of worship, uh, go ahead and bring that up on the slip during communion, place it in the basket, and it will be read aloud at the end of our worship service. As we begin this morning, we have a Taizé service that we are, are participating in throughout Lent. It's a very contemplative and repetitive um, way of centering ourselves and allowing us ourselves to kind of get lost in the music. And so there will be refrains sung multiple times of, of the particular verses, starting with our first one, Veni Sancte Spiritus. Um, and there may be some solos and some musical parts played by our instrumentalists, but you are invited to just keep singing during those parts. Correct, Steve? Yes, that's right. correct. All right. So keep singing. Keep singing. Keep singing. So we begin, and we will invite you to stay seated during these so that you can be contemplative. Um, we'll begin with Veni Sancte Spiritus, number 406 in the hymnal. Stand for our confession and forgiveness. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the world draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. 
God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Please join in singing our gathering song, number 327 in the hymnal and printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples in your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
first reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the Lord, word of the Lord came <clears throat> to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you're able to count them. And then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought them all these and cut them in two, laying each half over the other. But as he did not, but he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. 
When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. We will read the psalm responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me high upon a rock. Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me or not, O God, of my salvation. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Our second reading comes from Philippians chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, join me, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I will tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and the glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be comforted, conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord.
Please stand. The Gospel according to the 13th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, You will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Promises, promises, promises. They litter our lives in big and small ways. Commitments to meet for lunch on Tuesday, to go to a football or concert together. Commitments sealed by formal ceremonies of marriage, adoption, ordination. Contractual commitments to perform work or pay for a mortgage. And in all commitments, the promises that we make, there is a consequence to breaking them. Sometimes relational, letting down a friend, others more severe, divorce, bankruptcy. In our story, our first reading this morning of God's promise to Abraham, we often focus on the descendants numbering the like the stars when we read this passage. And that is a really important part of the passage. It is the promise that God makes to Abram. But there's a little bit more here that's actually pretty interesting. In Genesis 15, God put God's self on the line for this commitment. And we wouldn't necessarily know that because the commitment, the ceremony participated in, isn't one we're familiar with. It's the ceremony of a covenant. The way God seals this commitment is really important. It's verses 7 through 11. This is a ritual described that's a cultural ritual at the time, and God participates in it with Abram. It's easy to pass over. Oh, more animals in Hebrew scripture. Heifer, ram, bird. Yeah, old ritual. Skip to covenant. That's the interesting stuff. But this important piece we fly over is the covenant. God gives instructions on how to cut a covenant in this part of the scripture. It's not just a promise. This is an agreement where humans ensure their obligations with a symbolic gesture. These animals have been cut and there is blood in the middle. Humans, in making that promise, would walk through that path of blood between the two sides of the cut apart animals to symbolically assert that they would keep their promise lest their own body be severed like the animal's animal whose blood they walk through. It's a pretty important symbol to understand in this promise. And Abram has this vision where God, represented by that smoking pot and burning torch, a symbol that Hebrew people would remember from the time in the desert, passes between the carcasses 
in order to say that God will suffer death if God does not keep God's promise. I don't know about you, but to me, that is more than a garden variety promise. God puts God's self on the line to guarantee fulfillment of a promise that will bless humanity. It's unbelievable, actually. It's not how we think about gods, and it certainly wasn't how people in that day and age thought about gods. Gods were powerful, not vulnerable. And certainly, this one example of God's unbelievable promises is one of many that become more and more unbelievable to us throughout the ages. Mystery and the power of God and spirits and demons are no longer a part of the fabric of our existence. In this secular age that Charles Taylor ponders as he thinks about the ways in which the further we've gone away from mystery and understanding mystery, the harder it gets to understand God at work in our lives. When we no longer live in a world of enchantment, think fairies and demons and angels, we've been lured into a belief that the entirety of our existence is what we experience, what we can think about. I think, therefore, I am. We have come to believe. So is it any wonder that faith communities aren't bursting with people seeking out a connection with the divine? If I can think my way through and heal myself and fix my problems by my own will and hard work, how do I need God? And yet, the absence of enchantment hasn't made our pain disappear. In many ways, our pain is stronger than ever. In 2020, the National Alliance on Mental Illness reported that one in five adults that year experienced a mental illness. According to the World Happiness Report in 2021, by May of 2020, mental health issues increased by 47%. We have not been able to think our way to health and happiness. Perhaps enchantment, perhaps an experience of the divine matters. Even with all of those unbelievable promises, the kind of unbelievable promise that comes in the face of Jesus. Jesus who in our gospel from Luke tells us things we don't want to hear tells us that these promises but made by God are for all, not just a select group of people, and that Jesus will not be deterred from sharing it with all, even by threat of death. As Jesus heads to Jerusalem, the Pharisees warn him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. We don't want what you're selling here, Jesus. And these religious leaders have something at stake. They have gained privilege from the way the current world is ordered. They have a lot to lose if Jesus turns everything upside down the way he keeps talking about doing. He keeps saying the last shall be first and the first shall be last. He threatens the powers that be. And they've sacrificed a lot to get that power. They live under Roman oppression. So the way to get power is to align with those in power. We all know that the kind of sacrifice that takes, takes its toll. And once you've done it, 
It's really hard to want to give up what you got as a result. And into the mix enters Jesus. This is prophetic Jesus at this point in Luke. Prophets being those who say things people don't want to hear and are often killed for it. Jesus enters, Jesus refuses to be deterred and says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings? And you were not willing. Jesus says, I am here to rescue you. I am here to gather you under my wings to protect you. And you turn me away. These leaders could not have God's protection and keep their power. Jerusalem, this community of people who have experienced the pain of being spread all over diaspora by being conquered and taken and moved and displaced over and over again and have come back together in Jerusalem. These are the people Jesus is reaching out to, desiring to gather. God again putting God's self on the line to fulfill the promise God made to bless the descendants of Abraham. God with flesh, the living, breathing embodiment of God's covenant. As Jesus will remind us at the Last Supper. Jesus come to deliver the promise of the kind of protection we hear in the words of the psalmist. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold and my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter. Hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary and raise me high up on a rock. That's protection. That's a promise. And yet, we, like the religious elite of Jerusalem, are resistant to God's protection. We shudder to admit that we cannot lift ourselves up out of all that might harm us by our own willpower. We resist obedience. We, have, we think we have much to lose if we surrender to God's protection and let down our defenses, admit there's really nothing other than the power of the love of God and Jesus that can provide that protection. We white-knuckle through life, evaluating every decision to the nth degree to avoid a mistake, working harder and harder and harder to achieve, controlling and hiding our emotions, instead of turning to a God in Jesus who continues to pursue us, wanting to protect and save. Instead of resting in the assurance of our identity as God's very precious children. God's precious children for whom God would put God's self on the line to make an unbelievable promise. One loved so completely that God would take on every pain and the worst possible torture up to death to demonstrate that love, defeating death and bringing new life. That is what God has done for you in Jesus. That is what God continues to do for all in Jesus. May we who have the eyes to see and ears to hear listen and release our grasp 
surrender to God's loving, protective care and receive the blessing. Child of God, beloved, blessed. Amen. We continue with Hymn of the Day, Thy Holy Wings, number 613, printed in your bulletin. Please stand. join as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news, even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God. Attend to those expecting a child and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving especially those on our prayer list and those we name aloud or in our hearts. Merciful God, bring peace in Ukraine, guard the health and safety of the people of Ukraine and Russia, transform the hearts of those who continue to escalate conflict, bring peace to all parts of the world that endure conflict, Give leaders of nations the wisdom to choose peace over war, dialogue over conflict. Comfort those who fear. Merciful God. Bless and strengthen our partnerships with the Ames community, the Pine Ridge Reservation, the Hidaru Parish in Tanzania, and communities throughout the world. Multiply our shared efforts and bring joy to our relationships. Merciful God. You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are ended and who now rest with you. On the final day, gather all of us with them in your loving arms. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. This time, take a moment to share Christ's peace with one another. Peace be with you. invite you to return to your seats and sit down. At this time, we offer a portion of what God has first given us for God's work in the world as we receive our offering.
Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast, where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. The Lord be with you. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice peace and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. All are welcome at the Lord's table. As you are ushered forward, you're invited to step to the right or the left and receive the bread, and then go to the right or left to receive either red wine or white grape juice. If you need gluten-free wafers, just let us know. Uh, We do have them available, and our ushers have prepackaged elements available if you prefer to stay in your seat. Here is food and drink for the journey. Take and be filled.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. So today we're resuming with prayers of the people. So dear God, we pray a prayer of thanks. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings to us. Help us during this Lenten season to spend more time listening to your instructions to us. May we do your work and share your word. God of mercy, watch all over all who face surgery or other health challenges with the coming days. Grant them healing. Thank you, O Lord, for your gift of Jesus Christ. Save us from the time of trial, we beseech you. Good and gracious God, as evidenced by our prayers and petitions for the coming week, we know the world is full of joys, challenges, and trials. 
Help us remember that through faith in you, we gain both the peace and strength needed for whatever lies ahead. Guide our thoughts, words, and deeds so that we may walk your path of peace and love. Until we gather again in your name, the people of God say, Amen. A couple of announcements before we are sent into the world to join God in mission in sharing his, God's love. One thing you will note is that our, um, in the very back of your bulletin, there is an opportunity to be a part of the Lutheran disaster response efforts uh, in Ukraine. Uh, this is one of the best ways where 100% of the funds that you would donate would go to those efforts. So take a look at the information there in the bulletin. It gives you exactly what you would need to do if you um, would like to contribute to those efforts as they are ongoing. Um, <clears throat> secondly, I'm planning to have a spring new member class. It's not so much a class as an opportunity to get to know one another and, and talk about what it means to be a part of the life of this church uh, that is St. Andrew's Lutheran. So if you have an interest in that, I invite you to reach out to the office or to myself. Our contact information is on the back of the bulletin. Uh, once I have an idea of who would like to participate, we'll get times scheduled that are work for those who want to participate. Uh, please see our, the additional announcements about our ongoing Lenten worship services on Wednesdays, the devotional, uh, our service project, and the leaves, all of those things connected together uh, in how we are sharing the word of the story of God's love with the world around us. And finally, uh, right there at the very beginning of our bulletin um, announcement section, there's information about uh, funeral services for Milt Allison. We continue to hold that family in prayer as they journey through this time. Visitation will be Monday, March 14th from 4 to 6 p.m. and the funeral at Grandin Funeral Home. And the funeral home funeral is Tuesday, the 15th at 10.30 a.m. here at St. Andrews in the Sanctuary. It will be available also on live stream and there will be a luncheon following uh, interment in the columbarium. So, now may you receive this blessing. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Please stand and join in singing our sending song, Jesus Remember Me, number 735.
Jesus meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.